All right, guys, welcome back to the channel, Hill Creek Outdoors. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, firewood. And I guess that there's a question I've been asking myself for quite some time, and maybe you guys have thought it as well in the past, is, you know, what's the best method for firewood to get it to dry fastest, right? Should you keep it undercover, or should you keep it out in the elements to where um, more sunlight gets to it, right? So the ultimate goal with your firewood when you split it is to try to get that moisture content down um, the quickest possible. And, you know, just in reality, it just takes time. But is there a way to make it go faster than others? And I think my question today is, should you keep it under a roof or over cover? Maybe put a tarp on it or keep it under a roof? Or can you leave it out in the elements? So we're going to test that out today and kind of see uh, which method is the best. Um, so I split this firewood here. Currently, we're under the pole barn, the lean-to here. This is out of the weather. I split this firewood about one about one year ago. And I also have some wood down in the wood yard that I split the same time um, I filled this. It was out of the same exact batch, right? And so I kind of want to test where the uh, moisture content is in this wood is compared to that. And it is the same type of uh, wood. Um, so... We're going to have a good a good uh, test here. But this firewood right here, it, it's stacked. Um, there are some gaps through here how it's stacked, but it's off the ground. We do have some boards underneath here. We do have a good um, gap in the back side here to let air movement go through. That's about an 8-inch uh, gap behind. And then you can see here um, it's got plenty of airflow through the front. It's always windy up on the hill here, so this gets plenty of air movement, okay? But the thing is, it's under cover, and no water ever hits this. But at the same time, very minimal amount of sun actually gets to this firewood here. So we're going to go ahead and test that out. Um, to do that, I'm just going to basically use a moisture tester. This is a wood moisture detector, sorry, detector, and... If you guys don't have one of these, this is a great tool. If you sell firewood or you're utilizing firewood for your um, house or to burn, things of that nature. Uh, because if you don't have the wood moisture at the appropriate amount, it's not going to burn good. Um, it's going to put off a lot more uh, nasty soot, things of that nature. But it's also going to not burn as hot, right? And then you're going to have a sizzling and all that junk. Nobody wants that. You want to make sure you're burning good dry firewood um, i don't ever sell firewood unless it's good and dry because our my customers i want to make sure they're getting a really good product so i have one of these and i check the moisture before i uh, start selling out of a certain batch um, to my customers to make sure they get good quality so i'll throw this a link to this in the description below so you can purchase one if you, if you like to do so um, i think they're just a really handy tool and then we're just going to utilize an axe so we'll split one of these firewood pieces and you always want to get the moisture content inside. So we'll show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and get into the video. Appreciate you coming back. All right, so for this, I'm going to just grab, I want to try to get the same size piece of wood um, here as I do down there. So I think this one here is going to be good. We'll do two of them, just a, one here and one down that side and see. Maybe we'll get one in the middle here and see exactly what it is in the middle. So we're just going to go ahead and split this. And we'll see exactly uh, what it looks like. All right? So we split that. Let's go ahead and grab and grab our meter here. And what you want to do when you when you do your meter or your detector, I apologize. I did it again. You want to take your wood that you just split, and where it split, you're wanna gonna go in the middle here so this was the outside edge where it split now it's here okay actually it was the other way this is the outside edge this was the inside edge you you don't want to get it up here on the top you want to get it more down here in the middle and kind of prong it out you're going to stick these prongs in there as far as you can get it and there you go look there 10.7 percent right there in that piece of wood so that wood is dry and ready to go. Um, do it another place. 10.4. Okay. So that one's 10.4. Let's go ahead and get a maybe one from down in here. Let me just try to grab this one out. 
this is a, a thicker piece of wood. So you can see here, and we'll split this one in two. And um, we'll see the difference. So that was 10.4. All right. So once again, that outside edge, that outside, we're not going to check that. We're going to check on the inside here. So stick this in. And that one's at 10.9. Let's check a little bit further into the middle. Stick it in all the way. Okay, there it's 12.2. 12.1. I like my wood to be under, under 12, but anything really under, I think they say 15. I try to get it closer to 12 before I really sell it. Uh, 12 and under, you're good, um, in my opinion. So. I think that's what we're at right here, right about 12. Um, I'd say, let's do an average, let's do right about, it's 11. So that, that one here was 12, um, and the other one was 10 point something. So let's do an average of 11. So we got 11 up here um, where it's covered with good adequate air movement. Now let's run down to the wood yard and let's show you what maybe some of the wood down there is. Once again, it's the same time frame that it was cut, same exact batch. So let's head down there. All right, guys, so let me give you a quick rundown on how this firewood is uh, stacked. You might have seen my other videos when I actually stacked it. Uh, it was about a year ago, like I said. Same as up, up top at the pole barn. But how I stack this is um, two rows here, and then there is a eight inch gap in between. Um, but you have airflow all the way around. And right here gets the majority of the sun. It comes up and it gets almost full sun all day. Currently it's four, four o'clock. So the uh, sun is just going off of it. Gets dark right now about 530. So pretty much sun all day. It's kind of the same exact setup right as up at the pole barn because it's only an eight inch gap on the back side for both. But it's in direct sunlight, but it also gets wet from the rain and stuff. So it is out in the elements. Um, it does turn a little bit different color because of the sun. So let's go ahead and best way to test it out is just grab a piece of wood and let's go ahead and split it open and see what the moisture is. Once again, we're going to grab one on top, about the same size and grab one in the middle here. So, and it's all the same, pretty much the same wood. So the moisture is going to be the same, uh, different woods dry uh, slower or faster, but we're going to try to grab the same type of wood here. So let's just grab right here. This looks like about the same size. This is on top. And we'll throw that sort up here where you guys can see. And this one's on top. As you can see, we split right down there. Let's take this moisture detector. And once again, we're going to throw it on the inside, not the outside edge. And we're going to stick it right in here as deep as we can get it. Woo! Look at there. 16.2, 16.1, right? Let's try again, different location. Right there, that one says 13, okay? So right here in the middle was 16. Now here closer to the end is 13. Let's try up here now. Push it in there. Up here it's 18. 18.6. So I would say this piece of wood is not ready to uh, burn yet. So that one's going to have to dry a little bit more. So, so far, leaving it out in the elements is not the greatest. So let's grab one from the middle here. About the same size. I'm just trying to find one the same size here. This one here will be close enough. I can get it out. There we go. All right. So this one here, let's go ahead and split this one. And we'll see what the moisture in this one is. Well, that was a bad split, dummy. 
All right, split that one. Throw it right in the middle. Look there, 15.5. Move it around a little bit. Move it up. 13.6, 13.5. Up here, 17.6. So that's interesting. So the, the moisture on this side of the wood is less. So right about that 13 mark. And then as you get towards the inner, where you just have this, this gap here, the moisture content actually gets uh, more. So that's kind of interesting. But there you go. So the question is, right, what is better? Should you keep it out of the elements or should you get it covered? This has not been covered at all. Okay, this right here is, I never put a tarp on it. Nothing of that nature. So I don't know. You tell me. From that test, it looks like Keeping it covered is the best. Um, that overcompensates, I guess, the sun beating down on it. But hey, I, I got some wood over here that was the same time, but I'd never stacked it. And it's just been in a pile. So let's go ahead and check that. I'm kind of curious how the pile is um, because there's not as much air movement. Um, who knows? Let's see. All right, so here's our wood pile that was cut probably about a month after the stack that's down here. Once again, this has not been covered at all. It's just been laying here just like this. Um, once again, it gets all of us done, air movement, but I'm kind of curious the difference between it sitting like this or stacked. Um, so let's go ahead and find a piece. I don't think it's going to be that big of a difference because, well, it might be. I don't know. But a month's difference isn't going to be that much in moisture, I guess I should say. Maybe a half to a per percent difference in a month's worth of uh, drying. So let's find one and see what we got. Get one on top here. This one here looks good. And then we'll get one that's in the bottom there. That's not going to be split very well or dry because it didn't split very well. Maybe it was just because of that knock there too. All right, let's take our moisture detector. Start here at the top. Yeah, see right there? Well, that's 18.7. So it's it's on 18.5, 18.4. It's on pace with that one for the inner. Push this in there. 17.2, 17.1, 17. Oh, it went into the 16s. And let's go up in here. Push it in hard. And let it settle here. 17, 16, 9, right? So that's 16, 9 that was on top. So actually, actually, the month old, older wood is doing better than the stacked wood. It's kind of interesting, huh? All right, let's, let's grab one that was from in, inside here. Let's go right in the middle somewhere. I gotta find me a piece that's about the same size. There's one. Grab that out and let's split this. Ooh, that one did real nice. All right. Now, let's see what inside, because that technically doesn't get any very much rain. Might be actually covered from the rest of the wood. Right in the middle, 16.7. Let's go on the upper. Now that one's 19.4, 19.3. Let's go up here. <clears throat> Fourteen four, fourteen three. So believe it or not, based upon that test, I'd have to say that 
just the pile wood is doing better than the stacked wood. Let me know in the comments, guys, what you think or what you feel. I'm just here testing uh, real world, so I don't know. That that to me is, is mind-boggling. I wouldn't have thought that. If that's truly the case, then why would you stack wood? You know, it, it doesn't make any sense. It takes a lot more time and effort, and it's not as easy to load up if you just pick it up with a bucket and distribute it. So I think that's pretty interesting. Hey, thank you guys for coming back to the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, here on Hill Creek Outdoors. See ya.